so you can't play older games on an Intel Arc graphics card. Well, at least that's what people are telling me. Now I know in our last video around the Intel Arc, we said that we weren't going to be doing another video for a while. We're going to keep testing this card as time goes on. You probably won't see it for a while now because we're going to wait for several driver drops before we actually give it another test. See, we did say that. But I thought I needed to do a video to just kind of answer some of the questions we get. Whenever we do a video on our Intel Arc graphics card, we get a lot of messages or comments from people suggesting that they're pretty crappy because you can't play older games. Now, yes, in the early days, because of the way that Intel built these cards, and particularly when they focused fully on the newer APIs, older games were a little bit touch and go, depending on whether they'd play or not. And of course, there were also performance issues, particularly with the DirectX 9 games, and that's because Intel didn't really focus on DirectX 9. They focused on the newer APIs and the cards themselves don't even really have the hardware to play the DirectX 9 games which has led Intel to doing some kind of magic in software to be able to get them to work. Now since the launch Intel have dropped many different drivers and to be honest these cards have been getting better and better particularly when it comes to those old games and I thought we'd do another video on the card just to show people that you can actually play older games and they play reasonably well. Now it's quite fortunate that Intel actually, since the last video we did, have dropped another new driver, which actually really helps DirectX 9 games out, but not just DirectX 9 games, it also brings improvements to DirectX 10, 11, and also DirectX 12 games. So they're actually improving things right up the stack. But anyway, let's get this card reinstalled back into our studio system behind us, and we'll take a look at some games. Okay, now that we've got our card back in the system, and the card that we are using, if you don't follow the channel often, is the Intel Arc A770. It's the card that we bought at launch, and it's the Ellie version, so it's got the 16 gigabytes of RAM. We have actually downloaded the latest drivers for the Intel Arc, which were only released a couple of days ago, and they should be using version 31010140. So that is the latest and it was released on January 24th, 2023. They actually did a lot of improvements when it comes to particularly older games for this, but there are some improvements for new ones there. We're actually going to focus on just a few of the games that we play most, particularly old games, to see if there are any actual problems with them or anything like that. Now we know that we have tried things like Black Mesa in the past and the game does have issues when it comes to shadowing and lighting, particularly on the art card. And unfortunately these drivers haven't fixed that because we have tried that game again and it's still got those things there. So they haven't really fixed that issue yet. The game is still playable. It's just a little bit of a pain sometimes. So let's try some other old games that we generally like to play and we'll try and go up the stack a little bit with the DirectX versions and APIs that we use. So the first game we're going to test is an absolute classic and one of our favorites. We actually go back to play this all the time. So it's a really good test and it is Half-Life 2. Now Half-Life 2 is a DirectX 9 game and it was released in 2004. So we'll just go check some of the settings, make sure we're here. So we're running in 1080p because that's what we are currently capturing at. This game will actually run at a much higher resolution than that and it will be perfectly fine on pretty much every graphics card, even the built-in uh, graphics on APUs. We'll give ourselves a bit of uh, MSAA, we'll do four times, so we'll apply this. And then we'll just load into the game anywhere really, so Highway 17. And we'll just see what kind of frames we get, what kind of frame times we get, make sure things are pretty smooth once the game is obviously loaded. So we'll just reset those stats there. And the frame times, the 1% are not looking too good, they're going up and down all over the place. We've got a frame time or a 1% uh, low of 14 at the moment but you can't really feel it on the screen i'm not sure what's going on there because it's actually a pretty smooth game everything's working perfectly fine and we're currently averaging around 450 frames per second now i mean what more do people want when it comes to frames per second can you actually play anything more or do you need any more than a fight well it's now averaging 500 frames per second when we're inside we'll go outside get a bit of a scenery going on and then now that we're outside we can see a lot more things yes the frame ha frames or the average frames per second have dipped a little bit we're down to 432 now but again that is still massively high for what we need we don't need any more than that for a single player game we did feel a little bit we're just falling off there um, but we we did feel a little bit of a dip then as we were coming out of the uh, building but again it didn't really take away from the game so I'm pretty sure that Half-Life 2, one of the uh, games that were actually listed in Intel's recent updates as a game that they've generally improved throughout, works pretty flawlessly. There's no issues with this at all. 
we could play this all day long on that. You could just see a slight glitch there. And I suppose that is why we're getting the uh, zero on the 1% lows. Reset our stats again and see if they go up. No, they're, they're pretty much sticking around the uh, eight there. Now the machine that we are running does have a 10th gen Intel processor, but it should be more than enough for this game. Getting a little bit of a wobble now. There's a helicopter somewhere. Everything's starting to fall apart. Not quite sure what's going on here, but... Oh, it's a train. So there is a train going over the top of the bridge and it's making everything go a bit wobbly. Obviously, the Intel Arc here is not coping too well, particularly with the uh, graphics around. It seems that the wobble has actually continued through, but it's starting to clear up now. So it's all about that train that was going over the top and making everything wobble and just the way the Intel Arc was reacting to it. Not the greatest, I will admit, but it's an old game, so... It's probably reacting to that. But as we know that this can actually play, let's try a different game. We'll come up a bit more. We'll come a little bit newer. Still an old game, still a bit of a classic, but again, another one that we actually play and we play quite often. So let's kickstart that game. So the next game up is Far Cry 2. This was a game that was released in around 2008 on the PC in particular. And it does actually give you the option to change the DirectX that you're using. You will be able to use either DirectX 9 or DirectX 10. For this demo though, we have actually set it to DirectX 10 just to give a bit of variety across the APIs. If we go to our display options here, we can see that we're using DirectX version 10 and we can see it from our stats in the corner, D3D10. Uh, we've got everything, we've got VSync off, so we're going to get maximum FPS. Everything's turned up to high, except we've turned HDR off because we don't like that. We'll turn a bit of anti-analyzing on. We'll set it to four. Just kind of puts it in the middle. We'll keep them settings. We'll go back and let's get into the game. So Far Cry 2 isn't the most demanding game at all. And particularly, it's not the most graphical as well. When it was released, it was actually a fantastic game. It was so beautiful. But there's a lot of effects that we can get here. We're currently running at an average of 220 frames per second. And the 1% lows are fantastic. Currently running way over 100. But let's create some fire and things. And this game's quite dynamic because it will actually have fire that spreads and all this kind of stuff. And we'll see what it actually dips to. So frames per second are taking a slight dip, but it's not really affecting anything. The game is more than playable. It's super smooth. There's no issues at all. It is a little bit dark at the moment, so maybe daytime will change things. Um, there's a little bit of a graphical issue here with the car that just looks very liney and you can actually see the triangles that it's made up with. So that's actually a glitch with the uh, Intel Arc, I would have thought. So I don't think the game actually generally shows that. So yes, we've got a slight graphical issue, but the performance wise is actually displaying perfectly fine. And again, maybe in the daytime that would be different. So we'll try and set it to daytime and we'll see what happens. Okay, so we brought the game now into the daytime. We've reset it to the morning. And as we can see graphically, it looks fantastic. There is some artifact in here on the gun, as we can see. It's like you can again see some kind of lines through it. It is a very old game. I'm not sure whether that's the graphics card itself, but there's the tree that we burned down. It's actually still burning the day before. We're currently running at an average of 194, 95 frames per second. So performance is perfectly fine. Let's go and have a look at the car and see what kind of issues we've got there again. So again, it doesn't matter that it's daytime. We can actually see, I don't really know what that is, like the polygraphs or whatever, polys, whatever it is, that actually build up the uh, cars and things. So that's actually quite funny, but maybe that is a bit of a glitch and they need to actually do something about that. I'm sure in a later update, there'll probably be something. But apart from that, the game is playable. It's more than playable, should I say, because we're running now at an average of 240, 230 frames per second. And you don't need that much more, particularly for these old single player games. There's no need for it, really. You don't. It's not a competitive game. You're not looking for your high frame rates. You could probably just drop this and lock it down to 60 frames per second and get a brilliant experience from it. Now, the last game we're going to try is one of my all time favorite zombie style survival games, and that's Dead Island. I actually really loved this game when it was released and I played it originally on the console. So playing it on the PC is actually quite good for me because they always look better on the PC. But can our arc actually play it? Let's take a look. So if we go to options, we're currently averaging 30 frames per second, but that's in the menu. It's pretty much locked there. We've got uh, 1080p high texture quality. I like to turn most of this kind of stuff off. So the chromatic abbreviation effects, film grains, I don't like all that kind of stuff. So we'll turn that off. Um, we'll put the map size, shadow map size on high. Um, 
click everything else on best quote oh, well, we do want to turn these off so let's turn that off turn that off motion blur off and that one off so we'll leave anti-analyzer on and we'll confirm that and we'll get into the game. Now, Dead Island is a DirectX 11 based game and it was released in around 2011. It again is aged pretty well. It looks pretty decent still, obviously not to a more modern game standard like Dying Light, but it does actually look reasonably good. And the gameplay is fantastic. So if you haven't played this one, you definitely have to give it a go, particularly if you're into your zombie survival games. It is primarily based around melee weapons and things. So we have to get you know, close and dirty with our uh, attacks and things, but either way, it pretty much will play okay. We're currently averaging around 180 frames per second, which is pretty smooth, with 1% lows are down around 80, 0.1% lows at about 67, so it's actually looking pretty good. There's, there's nothing wrong there. There's a, there's a zombie, so obviously with a melee game, we have to whack it a bit, but apart from that, there's no glitches, there's no drops. Texture-wise, everything is starting to look pretty good, particularly from when this game was made. I know sometimes the shadows look a bit weird, but that actually looked like that on the original game. It's just the way that the game was uh, made, but there's actually quite a lot of good effects in this game, and the Intel Arc is managing to actually cope with them super well. The lighting is brilliant in this, there's a lot of detail, and if we can try and get up high, we'll, we'll try to get up high and we'll get rid of these things out of our way and then we can probably see a bit more of like the landscape so we get a wider view of things let's go down here i think this goes to the beach or we'll eventually get to the beach if we keep going to the beach we'll start to see like a big area so there we go so we've got a big area here screen is going blurry because i'm running and i'm out of breath but Generally, we can see all of the uh, detail in everything. We've got particles flying through and the Intel Arc is not having a problem. Reset our stats there again and we're averaging, right, kick this guy. We're averaging around 200 frames per second. And again, what more do you need from a graphics card, particularly with these old single player games? You don't need any more than 200 frames per second. In fact, most people are gonna be running these games at 60, maybe 120 and, and again, because it's such an old game, you can crank this thing up on an Intel Arc, particularly the A770, all the way up to uh, 1440p, and it will play very similar. You'll get very similar results on the FPS. So this is our look at the Intel Arc graphics card, particularly when it comes to older games with the latest drivers. As you can see, the games perform pretty well. There was only one out of the three that we tested, which actually had a few graphical glitches, and that was obviously Far Cry 2, and we showed them during the video but it does go to show that you can play lots of different old games now this is just a small selection of games and these are pretty much specific to what we kind of play these are our types of games and if you're watching this video and you're subscribed to the channel they're probably your type of games too but if they're not and you want us to have a go of something else maybe there are other games out there that you know have problems with an Intel Arc and you want us to check it out or maybe you just want to see will an Intel Arc play the games that you play let us know in the comments below we'll try to test whatever games we can and we'll get back to you don't forget you can also join our discord server where we'll start feeding some of this information in if there's anything you want to discuss around the card and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you in the next one